What's up, guys? This is Return to Tennis. I'm Aaron. Thanks for returning. The weather's been cold. It's been wet. Not outdoor tennis weather, which is unfortunate. I've got some other rackets I still got to review. I've got some more on the way. Uh, you know, it's Christmas time. Taking advantage of sales and uh, gifts. But for today, we're going to talk about the top 10 rackets that I feel I played in 2022 now this is not the top 10 rackets of 2022 right it's the top 10 rackets that i played that i hit and i hit a lot of rackets uh if you saw in the beginning there i've got probably about 36 rackets there three dozen um so it was kind of hard to trim it down like how do i pick just 10 because i really like a lot of those rackets i really enjoyed hitting most of those rackets in some capacity so I started thinking about it, you know, how am I going to trim this? Because I could easily do my favorite 15, my favorite 20. So how do we do it? So we decided, well, which rackets did we feel comfortable taking into a match? In some capacity, even if it was just limitedly. That we felt comfortable enough hitting them that we would play them when it counted. Okay? And that kind of narrowed things out. Because once I figured out which ones I played in matches, I realized I had exactly 10. Now, as you know, as I just said, this is not the best rackets of 2022. I haven't played every frame for 2022. I've got rackets from as far back as 1989 all the way up to the new models this year. So, obviously, it's not the best rackets of this year. It's just the best ones that I hit. And that I took into match play. I've got rackets I hit from 1995, from 1993, 2007. I mean, there was a mix. There was a lot of stuff in there. I tried a lot of different things, trying to still find that kind of that holy grail racket for myself. We're, we're getting close. I think we're getting close. There's some key contenders. But let's get into it. So, number 10 on my list, right? 10. Number 10 on my list is... The Yonix V-Core Pro HD. This is, uh, I think, the 2019 model. I like the color. I mean, a lot of people didn't like the color. I like this green. It's kind of like a dark jade looking kind of thing. I took this and I played a set. One set in one match and a set I was in a match I was in control of. I was already up 6-0 in the first set. The opponent was not much of a threat. So I decided to give this a swing. And I'd hit this on the machine. I'd hit it in drills. So I knew what I was getting into when I picked it up. Great on forehands, really driving forehands. I hit really great backhands with it. Two-handed backhands were just ripping. Um, I'm going to be re-hitting this here soon in drills again, uh, in point play, just to see how it feels. The only issue I had with it was on serves. I could serve well with it. It wasn't that I didn't serve well, but it felt sluggish. It felt slow coming around. Something in the balance made it feel just you know, kind of slow. I don't know. I didn't feel it on forehands. I didn't feel it on backhands. I only felt it on serves, which is why I didn't play it as much. Um, and, you know, I am trying to work my way down to playing lighter weights to take some pressure off my arm. And this is a heavy frame. This is pushing 340 grams right now. But number 10, the Yonix V-Core HD from about 2019. Fantastic frame. Number nine, right? Number nine, I played a match with this just because I thought it would be fun. The Head Radical Tour from 1995. This is the twin tube design. Uh, 107 square inches, large size. Hit great forehands, hit great backhands, hit awesome serves. Um, I was playing an opponent who I knew I could handle, and I wanted to play something a little different and try this racket out. Uh, I knew it was quick sets, which are only the first to four, right? So I wasn't going to be playing this racket a long time in the match. I was going to be maybe a half hour, 40 minutes, and then I could put it down. I served phenomenally well with it. My opponent was so distressed by it that he even commented, he goes, how can you hit every serve in? Every first serve, you're hitting them in. I just felt good that day. I mean, large sweet spot, great power. But not overly so. I mean, I could really kind of spin the ball pretty well with it. 
I just wish it was lighter. 347 grams. So to play with it for 30, 40 minutes, no big deal. Uh, if it was a match that started running like an hour, 15 minutes, hour and a half, there's no way. It would just, it would be get to be too much. Really smooth. I mean, so smooth and buttery when you swing it. Uh, a great design. I kind of wish these had still made a radical frame that was 100, over 100 square inches, like 105. Because I'd like to try it because this was, uh, it felt so good. Moving on. Number eight, right? Another head. Something more modern. The Head Speed Pro. This is the 360 graphene model. Uh, hey, Tennis Warehouse clear, clear, put them on clearance. I snatched one up. The blacked out version. Uh, really great frame. Very quick through the air. Hence the name Speed, I guess. Uh, hits great on the forehands and backhands. Great on volleys and drops. Um, I hit this in drills and point play just last week. And it played phenomenally well. I mean, I was really drilling shots with it. The only issue I've had with it, it's not quite as stable as I would want it to be. It doesn't feel as solid as some of the other frames do. It's not bad. I mean, it's it's decent with stability, but there's other frames that I've hit that are on the list that are more, they have more of a solid feel to them. Um, I didn't serve well with this racket. I don't know what it was. I could hit serves in. They just had no pop. They had no real speed on them, right? You know, there was no plow. You know, it's called speed. I should be able to really rip the serves. And I just couldn't. I could get them in. They had good spin. They had good pace. But they weren't like how I could serve with some other frames. Uh, but it is a fun hit. I'm not going to lie. It's staying in the, It's definitely staying in the bag. It's fun to pull out and drill forehands with. That was number eight on our list. Number seven for me was a frame I kind of walked away from for a little bit because I just felt it didn't have any power. And then, you know, I pulled it out of my bag on a whim during a match. And I ended up playing this for the next three or four matches that I played. It's the Technofiber TF40. This is not the new model. This isn't the current model. This is the model before that. I got this, and then like three weeks later, they released the new ones. I was so upset. Um, 305 grams, excellent control racket, very comfortable. 98 square inch head. Uh, I felt like it was lacking power. I ended up adding weight in the handle and dropping the string tension down. And that kind of uh, evened it out a little bit for me. That kind of fixed it. Um, I serve amazingly well with this racket. Despite how I feel on its lack of power on ground strokes, serves were just on point. I just banged serves out with this frame. Uh, not only was I did I have good pace and speed and power on the serves, but I was pretty good at targeting them. It was pretty precise. Uh, great frame overall. Really enjoy it. It's a fun hit, man. Technofiber's got a good thing going right now, I'll tell you. Let's see. That was number seven. Let's go with number six, right? Number six on the list. Something I played recently. The Diadem Elevate Tour FS. Uh... This was the first racket I played with this year. This is a player's frame. Um, I miss hit a lot of balls off the top of the hoop and on the sides, and it really tore my arm up. The weight plus the miss hitting really affected my arm badly, so I had to walk away from this racket. It's not that the racket is bad. It's that you have to have a solid stroke before you start trying to hit one like this. This is a, this is a player's frame. It, it really is. So... For my last final match of the year, I decided to pull it out and play it again. And as I'd spoken on a previous video, it was a UTR, I had not hit this racket in any competitive format in probably 8 to 10 months. But I decided I'm going to play it. My swing has improved because I didn't miss hit the ball with this frame. I didn't miss hit serves with this frame. I hit it fairly clean. I banged some monster serves with this. I mean, they were just ripping. Slice shots and topspin were fantastic. The Solstice uh, Power String, with that star shape, is an amazing string for spin. Uh, it's much more comfortable now that I'm not mishitting it. Surprise. Uh, did well at the net with it. Controlled. Had nice touch when I wanted it. 
this is a great, great racket. I'm very excited for the new Elevate version 3 that's coming out in January. Uh, I'm not going to get the tour. I'm going to, I'm trying to pull my weight down on the rackets that I'm playing. So the tour is probably where we're going to end up, but great racket. So happy to have it in my collection. It still it stays in my bag. I mean, I still pull it out once in a while now. So number five, right? We're down to the final five. This is something I picked up on clearance because it was a demo model and they had gone to the new paint jobs and it was the E-Zone, the Yonex E-Zone 100. Uh, my opinion is still the same. It's probably the best 100 square inch racket you can buy off the shelf. It has a lot of available power, but not overly so. Like I feel like the Bobolot Pure Drive and the Diadem Nova, for example, they're too much power. At least for me, there's there's too much there and too little control. Um, this one is a very nice balance. The Ezone 100 is a nice balance of power and control. It is stiff. It is a stiffer frame. I mean, it's like around 69, I think. Uh, I switched to this from our number four num racket, which we'll get to next. Uh, and I hit it amazingly well. I mean, it was it played really solid. It, it kind of had a nice mix for where I was at at the time. I needed more power because I, have, I was not back to a full swing yet, but I still needed the ability to control the ball. And this fit the bill, and it plays really, really nicely. Uh, stable. I did have to, you know, weight it up. It's probably about 340 grams now, which is probably a little too heavy for me at this point. I'd probably want to pull that weight down. But it's really good in all respects. Uh, if you haven't tried the E-Zones out yet and you're thinking about switching a racket, uh, give them a swing. Uh, the E-Zone uh, line in general is really solid, so I'm a big fan. Number four on the list, the Selenko Whiteout 305. I recently re-hit this one in Drills and Point Play, actually the same day as I did the Head Speed. I played this one in the morning and I hit the Head Speed in the afternoon. So, what was really great, um, before I went out with it, I said, you know, I'm bringing my weight down. I'm hitting lighter weight rackets. I'm trying to get used to it. So let's change the weight and the cap, right? Because I have the, the weights. You can buy weights to come with it. You can swap the weight and move it up and down. I had it set at 315 plus strings and everything. I was going to switch it back to the original 305. But before I did, I put it on the scale. And I was shocked at how heavy it was. So when I first got it in stock form, I switched it to 315. It had Selenko strings in it that came with it. It played beautifully. The strings wore down. The grip wore down. I changed the grip out. I changed the strings, and I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Couldn't hit it. I stuck with it for a little bit in, in practice, in drills, to try to maybe you know get used to the strings. No, it wasn't working for me. It was not working for me. So... I took those strings out. I put in these. These are the Ytex. It's a it's a hybrid setup I did. It's a multi-filament from Ytex called the Touch, and they're Octo Twist. It only hit marginally better, and I couldn't figure out what the problem was. Only marginally better, so I I just stopped hitting it. I, that's when I went to the E Zone and I stuck with it for a while. So. This past week, when I decided I was going to re-hit it in drills, I'm, I was going to change the weights, I said, okay, well, let's weigh it. It weighed out at 350 grams. The grip I had put on it was a very soft, spongy kind of grip. It weighed 27 grams. I didn't even check the weight when I did it like an idiot. I just put it on because it felt good. No wonder I was struggling with it. It was too heavy. It was far too heavy. I put a Tourna Thin replacement grip on. I swapped the cap out to the 5 grams, so it's back to 305. Now it's sitting around 327. I hit it amazing. It felt so good. Very, very solid. Very solid feeling on everything I hit. It was an amazing racket. I really enjoyed it. I'll probably be hitting it again soon. Uh, just a great product from Selenko in general. Number 3. Right? The Angel Custom 100. This is the racket, if everything, if I felt like things weren't working out with whatever I was trying out, this is the racket I always came back to. 
The Angel 100 Custom, it's built to my specs, uh, hits great on serves, has great power, it is missing a little bit of control. It could have a little bit better control. But it is an amazing stick in general, and for the price, you're getting a custom product for the price, and it's which is below what most off-the-shelf rackets are going to cost. Very well constructed, super comfortable in all respects, uh, foam-filled, very solid frame. Um, but now I'm kind of feeling like it's a little more power than I want. But I still do pull it out when I get in trouble. I'm like, oh, this racket I'm playing is not working out. Maybe we should just go grab this one. And I, so I still do like it. But that's my number three pick. We only got two left. What do you think made it? Right? What's my final two? It probably won't come to a shock to a lot of you if you've been following the channel. Number two, the Angel K7 Lime. I actually like this better than my custom. It's crazy. Um, very solid racket. In a lot of respects, it's very similar to the Selenko. Okay? And the way that it's similar, like the Selenko, is it feels good in all points on the court. Volleys, backhands, forehands, serves. Everything feels solid. There's no one category where the Selenko or the K7 stands out. But there's also no one category where I feel it lacks. It pretty much does everything you want it to do. It just doesn't have a feature that's a huge standout for it. Um, I'm going to be re-hitting this one again soon. I haven't hit it in a little bit. But solid frame, 315 grams. Um, if that's too heavy for you, Angel does have the K7 Red, which is a 305. And I think they have the Cyan, which is even lighter than that. Uh, great, solid product. They uh, routinely run specials on these. So if you're interested in them, you grab one up. <laughs> Serves well. Volleys well. Good touch. Good, Excellent spin. Excellent spin with this. I get great slice shots with this. But a really great product. Final one, guys. What's number one? What's number one? I've been playing it recently. I've been playing my last several matches with it. And to my surprise, if you'd have asked me, if you'd have told me months ago my number one racket at the end of the year that I'd be playing would be this, I would have told you you're crazy. It's a Prince. It's a Prince. I never liked Prince rackets until now. Now I've got three of them. The Twist Power X100 Tour. Uh, produced in Japan, it says it right on the throat, foam filled in sections, certain sections of it are foam filled, tremendous spin, uh, very comfortable, reliable, just an overall great frame, comes in at 300 grams, uh, spec weight at 317, I added an over grip, I got it bumped up a little bit, I'm still like around 325. What really surprised me with this racket was how much power I was getting out of it despite its weight. I felt with its lack of mass, it wasn't going to have a lot of plow through, um, but it does. It has quite a bit of plow through for it, for its weight. It's extremely well, very smooth, and just an overall fun hit. It is kind of look gimmicky, I will admit. But, hey, whatever it is, it's working. So that's it for me, guys. That's my top 10 rackets for me personally in 2022. Some of these rackets will probably be on the list next year if I do another one. Uh, but there may be some changes. I've got some stuff on the way. Really looking forward to that Diadem Elevate. I also have a Dunlop on its way. I've never owned a Dunlop. I've never hit a Dunlop. So uh, we found a deal on eBay. But we'll have some, hopefully we'll get some nice weather. I'll get out. I've got some other uh, sticks that I haven't hit for you guys yet on camera that I haven't really given my impressions while I'm hitting them. Uh, hopefully we'll get a clear break in the weather here and we can get some footage of those. But that's all for today, guys. If it's warm where you are, play some tennis. May all your returns be for winners. And I now return you to your regular scheduled programming.